dodge the question. The court clerks would dodge the question. The one in West Virginia, she just always lied to me. She says, no, it's in the West Virginia Constitution. I said, really? Where? She said, I think it's in section 8.3. So I went and looked last night. No. Um, the, the lady at the West Virginia bar was my favorite. She actually admitted, no, you don't need it to practice law and that, yes, it's not a license, it is a membership, but there is a license. I had three people pull that stunt on me. I said, would you please send me a, an example of that license so I know what it looks like and I can settle this matter? Uh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> and I recorded every single one of them. So they definitely lie through their teeth. Well, the interesting one was the West Virginia one. What, what I've discovered is how they do it is some states mandate the bar, some do not. Okay, West Virginia does not. But every one of them says you have to go through the Board of Examiners for competency. In other words, do I have a problem with that? No. Do I have a problem with checking to make sure you're knowledgeable of law <clears throat> and that you're actually competent enough to handle it and do the job. No, I don't have a problem with that, but that's not a license. You know what I'm saying? That's checking to see if you actually know what you're doing. I mean, you wouldn't go down to the mechanic shop to have them work on your car if the guys actually had, had no training whatsoever. Now, that doesn't mean necessarily I agree that you have to go to law school. But if you've had, like me, I've been doing this for seven years, and I'm an attorney's worst nightmare. And you got Kirk Pendergrass. He's been doing it for eight, almost 19 years. Chris Hallett's been doing it for a while. David Roach, he's been doing it about 20 years. Uh, Sean, you all know Sean. He's been doing it for about 20 years. People like us, attorneys, are scared to death of us. So, so do I, would I need to do a competency test? Okay, you know what you're doing. Here's your certificate to show, and this should be work nationwide. You can practice law, do whatever you want. You don't need us to vote, go behind you no more. You at least know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Because you would, like I said, you wouldn't go to a shop and have some guy that's never been to school, has never turned a wrench, work on your car. See what I'm saying? But to say that someone that is competent cannot practice law because they don't have this mysterious thing called a license that you won't even be honest about, and then you will charge them with the unauthorized practice of law, now you're violating a man's fundamental right because it is a right of common, uh, it is right common to the people. Now, some of them tried to pull this stunt on me Oh, but you have the right to practice law in your own case. I said, uh, that's not practicing law. That's self-defense. That's protected by the Second Amendment. And she come back and said, oh my God, you're right. <laughs> uh, let's see here. I was looking up something to tell you. There's this... Uh this other group that uh, I just learned of, E Nation, like to uh, E and the Nation plus Craigslist University Study Group. Yeah. You know, the purpose of it is to get people connected throughout the country, but locally. Okay? So okay. there's gonna, so eventually there would be some, I don't know, some legal documents to help create a nation um, to, you know, like protect our laws, uh, <coughs> but also help people locally, like with um, the notarial needs for holding court on the courthouse uh, steps, like Harry Baldwin style, to get our private administrative processes rushed through to get the 
declarative judgments <coughs> so we can hurry up and you know we you know make our bond perfect it and uh cash out without having to just sell out um for less what i'm gonna i'm gonna tell you the same thing i always tell you don't be in a hurry hey if i can streamline it there's no problem with that you'll streamline it you'll think you'll have all the answers then they will change the rules this is a lifetime of study uh, i'm not just gonna tread Look. water forever no, you're not going to tread water forever. You're correct. You're going to actually say, okay, I know enough about this one subject to give it a try. Okay, I'm going to be kicking butt with this and moving on to other things, all right? Look, I did the GSA bonds in the family court case. Why? I've been studying it long enough to where I said, I think I got a good understanding, so if they come after me, I can explain myself. You know what I'm saying? Needless to say, they didn't come after me. Well, you know, we've got to think big while I'm doing it. Um, Thinking big is not a problem. My five-year goal is to actually branch out on my <coughs> law firm and be overseas with some of it. Hmm. I think it's a great idea. What, Who's that? I, what? What's the great idea? <laughs> to find different groups that we can connect with so that we all can mesh. Oh, yeah. And have somebody that we can lean on, help mm -hmm. us, help yeah. whatever. That, to me, that's a great idea because honestly, there's no one person that knows everything about the system. Everybody knows bits and pieces. It's no different than attorneys that claim to practice law. That's why they are good at one type. And that's all they'll do, like criminal or civil or family or whatever. And then they just get good at that one section. Um, but they don't realize it's by law. Uh, it's all statutes, codes, rules, regulations, and procedure. Uh, so they don't even know all everything. You get in front of judges if you know the law. Judges don't even know everything. This, this monstrosity of the system is too damn big for anybody to know everything. You just got to be able to know enough to hold yourself in court to keep your ass out of jail. Well, getting connect good connections is going to help too. Okay, so another thing is we've got to get good at, you know, greasing palms. Like with our conditional acceptance, arbitration, money order... Um, contracts, we need to be greasing the right palms, given percentages. Now, I will, I will give this warning. The system loves putting out misinformation, right? So, if you're going to join groups, you got to be careful not to join too many groups. Uh, I'm not part of PJ's that I'm aware of on a Facebook group, I'm part of Marie's, but I've known Marie for about, what, a year now? I don't know. And it's been close to that, maybe longer. Um, I'm quiet a lot because I'm a truck driver, so it's hard to type and drive. But I'm part of Yusuf L's group. Uh, Rob Ryder doesn't have a group. Eon doesn't have a group, but I still follow them on YouTube. But I'm very selective because if you join a whole bunch of groups, you run the risk of finding things that sound good but are not good. And that's when people get in trouble. People can get in trouble just walking out your door. They don't well, have to do anything. Well, you're not wrong there. I think I've that somebody wrote a book called Five Felons, Felonies a Day where they actually showed that, uh, where people getting out of bed on the way to work commit five felonies. <clears throat> but that's not the point. The point is this information is exploding. I mean, I can throw a rock and hit somebody. 
that's heard something about it. I got a state delegate wanting to pay me to come to Minnesota to teach families how to protect their children. And she exposed the, the human capital performance bonds and she was only scratching the surface. She had no idea about the birth certificates until she met me. And then I showed her a four hour presentation and showed her exactly how the system was set up and it blew her away. So and she told me last night, she said, you ain't gonna believe how many people are coming out talking to me now about it, how the, with the birth certificate, the socials, and we don't own ourselves. And She's she a, said, she mm -hmm. had, and they just started, they're just, they're just coming to her left and right. Well, she's, they're probably going to kill her, you know. No, nah, no, nah, she's too, she's too public. Nah. She is, she is too public right that's now. That's not going to, that's not going to uh, be allowed. Uh, well, the conference we're going to have is going to be private. In other words, you got to register, you got to buy tickets, it's private. I told her it's not going to be open to the public. Have you heard that um, Pastor uh, Tony King is doing teaching again? Yeah, Tony now King. He, th that's a big one. Right. Now, if they if they're gonna let him do it, and then I heard it, that they're saying they're spinning, spinning it like it's for Trump. Back like when they were saying spinning it, saying it's for Obama or or his info yeah. came from Obama. And give me yeah, a break. Tony King is actually very knowledgeable of what he's doing. I just didn't like Tony King's package when he first did it. Well, he wants he you to give him all the money, taught, doesn't he? He taught, yeah, he basically wanted to, you to give him partial control of your estate. And to me, that's kind of where I have a problem. You got some of these people, and I actually know a guy it happened to without his knowledge. He's a truck driver, right? He had this tax preparer doing his taxes every year. He found out that she set up a bank account couple of bank accounts with his social and his name and I had to explain to him why one it wasn't his and two that and that opened the door where I talked to him about how the system what the birth certificate was and everything he says oh yeah he said I can't even touch that account because I'm not the one set that set it up I said you could possibly file a complaint on her for securities fraud but you would have to get your documents in order to prove you're the beneficial interest holder of the estate and she's trespassed on your estate. See, when you give your information to other people to fill out documents and everything, you run the risk of giving someone else partial control. I have it's a big problem with the I have a big problem with the WIFIT W H F I T and I want feedback from anybody who knows any more about it like Sandy or Marvin <coughs> or Chris or Marianne never heard of it uh, El Mago's documents do you guys have a never clue about that oh my okay All right, because he's talking about this, you know, the w international way of doing business and giving 50% to the treasury of your, you know, transactions, and I don't like the sound of that. You know, I, a small percentage is okay, but 50% is huge. It depends on what you're, what, how it's set up, because if you are submitting a bond to the treasury and you set it up to where they get to, any of the profits or interest off of that bond for the benefit of the United States, could it not potentially be 50%? And all you're wanting is the original principle for your indemnity and set off, right? So what they're doing might not be no different. Well, we need to be careful about who's trying to who were given uh, control right. in any way, you know, over our stuff, because some of these documents uh, do that. Like, even exactly. with this, just the POA, everybody's doing, okay, Form 56, Form 56. Why, why, why? Hey, I know someone that actually used Form 56F, the fiduciary form, and according to what he told me, he got a credit card bill paid off. 
he put the information online right there on Facebook because <clears throat> he shares his documents right out in the open. I told him, I said, you're crazy. <laughs> he said, what do I care? It's not my stuff. It's, they created it. It's theirs. I just get them the responsibility. All right, what else do we need to discuss tonight? Does anybody have a question? Credit Honor, I don't really, I'm not familiar with you. Can you tell me your name? Maybe it's somebody that's uh, in a business. Hmm. I got a lady in Greensboro that's done uh, done most of her secured party process. My dad run into down in Greensboro where I'm from. Dad was in there talking to her about this stuff. She knew about all of it. I said, you need to talk to my son. <coughs> so she's uh, going to reach out to one of her friends in that area that actually has issued the bonds to the Treasury so we can have a sit down and see if we can clear some things up. Have you talked much with Sean Haggerty about the declaratory judgments? I ha I've talked a little bit about it. You're talking about, well, it depends on which one you're talking about. Are you talking about the one with the uh, tax office? I'm not talking about his personal stuff. I'm just talking about um, how to do it. Um, no, the only one when I've talked about is when you filed with the uh, tax court. He, he, he showed me how to fill out their form. And you submit it in, but don't pay the actual fee. And when they try to deny uh, you, to deny me process, process, due process, because there's no fee, and he's he got a ruling back that there's no deficiency and that he doesn't owe a tax, and everything went away. Hmm. I haven't done it yet. Well, I want to try to follow up on stuff he's, uh, info that he's given us. It's just that I get bogged down with doing uh, so many things. Well, how do you think I feel? I drive a truck for a living. <clears throat> yeah. Once I get out of the truck, I'll have more time to do things. You're pretty tech savvy. That helps. Yeah, well, thank you. Let's see. But oh. it, it, driving a truck has always so been a great benefit because... I meet people like y'all and I'm able to be of assistance because I, I could talk on the phone all day, point people in the right directions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times I do talk on the phone all day. Does anybody have the um, uh, private administrative document that April co-authored? I was wondering how much she's charging for that or if she's giving it out <laughs> to our group. <laughs> Well, here's a question. <clears throat> Has anybody found any notary that actually understands doing notary presentments? Because I don't think they're actually called that, but that's the common nomenclature. Well, I want that's one of the main reasons I want her um, her draft on this because she's telling people of maybe a new spin on how to do it, how to get it done. Well, if you go watch Yusuf Bell's video on high frequency radio. Mm -hmm. Near the end, he goes over a step uh, uh, and that's the one I'm familiar with. All right, repeat that because you're cutting out. Um, on high frequency radio, he just put out a video last night called Creditors and Their Bonds. Mm -hmm. okay. I don't know how long it'll stay on YouTube. I'm going to go download it here shortly. Because he puts up some videos that are very important and the system will take them down for no reason. It, just go back and look and it's gone. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and I've actually approached him on that. He said, what do you mean it's gone? And he said, <laughs> look, I'll be damned. <laughs> Did you record it or, you know, download it? 
I'm gonna download this one, yes. Um, Him and uh, Eon, you gotta be real quick on the draw. That's why I want unlimited storage for those videos. Oh, I, I know. I know. You gotta download them quick if you're gonna download them all. Plus uh, Harry B. Harry Baldwin, he puts stuff up, you know, taste, you know, get a little taste of the sweetness here. And then he'll take them and say, now you gotta pay me. <laughs> yeah. So you gotta get those. Now, Yusuf L don't take them down. I don't know Eon well enough to know if he does or not. But I um, do know Yusuf L is actually somebody behind the scenes gets them taken down. I think on occasion, uh, uh, Eon might delete, but the government gets them. So. Yeah, I know. So, but at the end of the video, Creditors and Their Bonds, mm -hmm. he goes over and shows you the documents right there on the video. So you can pause it, and if you're quick, if you're good at typing, you can type out the document. Yeah. Uh, but he shows you and gives you a step-by-step -step on how to do the administrative process. Okay, thanks. And it, he actually gives you an application, say ABC Corporation is coming mm -hmm. after you for a $5,000 debt, you know. He, so he gives you an example of when it would apply, right? Yeah. <clears throat> he even shows the GSA bonds. He shows uh, a couple other forms. So it's, it's a very, very good video. Thank you. And the GSA bonds, I'm a believer in those now. Do you have that downloaded? Can you just give that to me so I can upload it as a, so it'll, or you can do it so that the video starts playing when somebody starts scrolling, you know, when they're scrolling through their dis, um, their timeline or whatever the heck, their feed, or in my group, so the video will just starts playing automatically. I want it uploaded like that. What do you mean? That video you that you're talking about. Avail? Yeah, that one. Oh, if I download it and send you the Dropbox links once I put it in Dropbox, All right, I'll have to that's just fine. download it, open it, and play it. I mean, it's not going to be like an automatic thing. Well, it's the, it depends on how you upload in the group. It could just, you know, you do it as a link or you do it um, yeah, playing. Yeah, I, I can go grab the link right now and put it in, in the group. All right. I want the, I want the download. So just give well, it to me in Dropbox. I need to make a, a, a private file for you so you can give me stuff. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what I do for people. I have private files. It makes it easier. Oh, I've got a client section myself. Don't feel, don't, don't, don't think I don't. It helps me to know what not to just like, you know, throw out there. That's the video I just put it in the group. Oh, thanks. I, um, oh, I've got a section in my Dropbox that's a folder called Clients, and I go in there. Now, I don't know how many people's on here at the moment, and I know that Marie's not going to agree with me. <laughs> here, but I'm going to have to tell y'all something. When you sign up for Dropbox, if you get the free account, you're only going to have uh, like two gigabytes of space. Two gigabytes starting out. If you if you find a bunch of friends that don't have it, you get them to sign up. You'll get a half a gigabyte per friend. Um, so I started out on Dropbox with three gigabytes because of that. You you're going to have to pay at least ten dollars a month and get you at least a one terabyte account. You're gonna have to. Because the problem is, I can share a buttload of documents with you and it, on a two gigabyte account, oh yeah, I can give you so many documents, it'll, you, you, you'd struggle to read them all. But, when you get into audios and videos, you can't do it. So, I've got a 20 gigabyte Dropbox, a 20, dollar account through Dropbox and I've got two terabytes. So it costs me 20 bucks a month. I think and Daniel was telling me to do that, do the two terabyte. Yes, 
go switch your account from what you got to 20 terabytes. I mean, not 20 terabytes, two terabytes to the to the non-business professional account because it's 20 bucks a month. I don't know if they'll now, let me it, switch it right now. Yeah, they will. I did the business package that was the same one you got. They said, well, let's try it for 30 days. If you don't like it, you can switch it. I said, okay. See, I didn't realize because they don't get very clear on the website on how much it is. You find out kind of later that it's $25 per person. They're very tricky. Yes. I said, no, I'm not paying $500 to have all my friends on this account. No. I said, uh, I said, maybe later when I get my business going, my firm, mm -hmm. maybe. Until then, no. Where'd you put the video? I don't see it at the group. <clears throat> I put it in the chat room. Oh, why do you do that? Stop it. Because that's where you've trained me to put things. No, so I didn't train. I at. trained. I said stop. <laughs> mm. I said that's, that's only for pedos stuff. That's it. Okay. Well, I thought All right, go tell Christina. Go tell your friend also. What, Christina? Yeah. That's just for pedo stuff. Okay. She's sweet. I don't want to be grouchy yeah. to her. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, okay, so we're, we were talking about Dropbox um, fix-its. So yeah. you're saying that I should make... Um, some special like individual files that are under two gigabytes and then share like somebody can try to download that one if, one file at what, a time so that if, then they can um, discard it or unshare it or whatever and then have their if, space capacity available going, again yes if you are going everybody's on here I don't know how many of you's got a paid account or free account my advice is get a paid account but we should between each other is a lot. Uh, but if you are absolutely not going to do that, then what you have to do, Marie, is you Preferably. All right, you got to start all over. You got to start all over. <laughs> okay. So, move it, download it to your computer in a different place. Put it on an external hood that yours is empty, and she can go in and add more stuff for you to download it, and it'll take longer to get you all the stuff. But over time, once you've got it all, then when she's every week, she can add new stuff and you've emptied the folder. Because if you well, have I an think... editing capability, then you can empty it and delete it. And one thing you can do, Marie, is what I did. Go get a section of folder named clients, okay? That's all the people you work with. Make a folder just for them with their name on it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a document and put the links for two gigabyte files on that document. And then they can just go ahead and click on the link at whenever. It doesn't have to be a time, there doesn't have to be a time limitation to be able to get into that file, download it, what, the, what they want, and then unshare the file so they can have their space available again. So that's how I'll do it. that to emails you a link to your Dropbox. I'm pretty sure the way to do it is, is right click on the link and save target as and it should download the file to your computer. Hmm. 
Um, Daniel, <laughs> did you upload any audios? I think I took a peek. When I took a peek, I didn't see any. Out of Ohio, coming into West Virginia. Well, what other uh, issues can we cover today? Kinds of issues. I've got a whole subscription. Well, I'm asking the pedo group. <laughs> hey, Daniel, did you upload any audios? Because as soon as you do, I want to start listening to them. Okay. If you if you need to. You can email to me. I can upload. I'm, I'm going to through a tunnel or yeah. something. <laughs> hey, speaking of Daniel. Hey, Daniel, did I give you my number? Give me what? No, I, I don't have number? your number. If you want to try to come um, since tomorrow is the weekend, you're going to be free to call me. I'm, I can talk tomorrow, yeah. That'd be great. Okay. And then we can actually have a um, conversation about I'm that. Just, we can, we can for sure. I'm, I'm, I hope it's alright. I'm kind of like on the clock right now. I, I just called to be uh, 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 listening. <laughs> That's alright with everyone. You ain't gonna hurt my feelings on the call me. Oh, I'll, I'll pop in when I can. I'm just, I'm, I just don't want to be uh, out of the mix. <laughs> I, I, uh, hey, Rogine, I just uh, was wondering. Oh, I, how's Rogine? I haven't heard from you. Am I on mute? <laughs> no, you're not on mute. Alright. No, I don't forget. Oh, I think Rogine shared some, um, a really nice link for a bunch of Patrick Divine files. That was good. If you have time to look at. Where was that? Oh, it's just a link for the Patrick Divine Files. I think I shared it in discussion. Um, it was such a memorable name. I can't remember it now, though. Mm. I've got heard of Patrick Divine. About Patrick, I have no first-hand knowledge of this. Most of his stuff is great. Some of it, rumor is, and it's it's not a lot, but it's it's possibly in some of the important areas, is wrong. That's just rumors I've heard, uh, but that's where you have to have been studying long enough to recognize it, I guess. I've looked at some of his stuff, and yeah, the stuff I've looked at. But that's where you've had many people. Well, everything's time sensitive anyway, dynamic. So you always have to consider things from today's context of what, you know has happened, what needs, what changes are happening. We keep, um, yeah, we keep a, we Go keep ahead. possessing a new type of contextual understanding of what's going on and we need to use that. I, to be I don't do that. Huh? See, I actually, 
you know, when I purchased a bunch of use of fails webinars, I purchased all of them two and a half years ago before SP the university company. Wow, true stuff. And he's actually said it. He tells you where certain gurus have done things where he thinks they're wrong. Mm -hmm. But he said every, but it goes back to what I said earlier. Nobody has all the information. We all have bits and pieces. It just plus, takes time to learn to recognize the right stuff. Plus something can be right, but they change it so that fewer people can do it. True. So maybe even something that seemed wrong could be right if you're doing some other things to show more competence. Possibly. Like if, like if you're your own POA. Possibly. If, you know, you're your own fiduciary, trustee. Well, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do we have any pedo um, questions? I don't. I mm -hmm. made the time to watch the darn videos. <laughs> I know. That's too. why I wish they were on YouTube. Because if I open them in Dropbox, well, they I are can't on YouTube. Dropbox they are on YouTube. Not what all, do you mean? Not all the. They are. Where's the channel? Well, I think not all of them. I mean, you could secretly, privately put them in your own little channel and keep it private. Once you like download all of them and then upload them, so then well, you yeah, could. But you could personally access them on YouTube then. I don't tend to do that unless I've spoken to the creator like Yusuf L. He, I put his videos up there on occasion because he's told me I can do it. Well, I'm if saying make it private so only you make it private so you only you view it. I'm not really telling you to do it, but I mean that yeah. I get so tempted by somebody saying you can't do something that I want to tell them, oh, but well, you can. <laughs> Well, see, the reason I like YouTube, everyone, is because uh, I pay for YouTube Professional. So yeah, me too. It takes out the commercials, plus it plays it in the background when I'm not actually on YouTube. My other video playing apps, you close the app, it quits playing. I'm like, crap. Some people are putting their ads on there anyway, even though I pay to not have ads. Well, I can deal with that. I mean, the person, say PJ put ads in the middle of his presentation. So no. I, I can deal with that. It's the mainstream media's advertisements. I don't want to see every three to nine minutes. All right. So let's keep it, um, let's keep it focused. Are, is there anything else, is there anything else we need to deal with? I really want to get to that, um, declaratory judgment thing and um, work out the detailed steps of the private administrative process. People need to know that before they get involved in stuff. Do you happen to know a name by the guy by the name of Thomas Deegan? What's the last name again? Deegan. Deegan. No. Yeah. He's actually, he goes by the name of the ghost. Okay. On Facebook or what? Uh, that's just the people that know him know him by ghost. Oh, is he a trucker? No. Okay. He's got, there's some videos on YouTube about him. Uh, he has given the United States absolute fit. He's done all the stuff. And yes, they still locked him up for 18 months in solitary confinement. Well, that's a long but time. But he's, uh, he's a fighter. He knows law. Oh my gosh. Mm. So I told him I wanted a one on one conversation with him at some point. So he might mm -hmm. he might be reaching out to me not next week, but the week after. We need to get emergency habeas corpus files all ready. And we need to have good um, contact hubs many, that, that are overlapping. How many of your people know the, the GSA bond process? I don't know. There are certain documents you should have very easily, readily available. Uh, one of those are your exemption bonds that you would place into a court file. I mean, those, you can write those up, print them out 50 at a time, 
you can write in the docket number later for the case and mm -hmm. um, put them into your, if you ever have to go to court, you can put it in the case. All right, let's uh, have a special zoom on that, and you're going to use your, um, you know, your computer screen, and you're going to explain how to do it from the beginning to the end. It won't be this weekend. Yeah, whenever, but that sounds really good, okay? That's a special yeah. zoom. That's important. All right. I can do that. All right, that's excellent. We just did the GSA um, for SS increase. So we've been working on learning more about the GSA bond. Is that the inner circle work or what? Inner circle meaning? For with Pedo. No. All right. But he is the one that has been guiding us with it. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you a basic of what I did. Last year. See, I've been, I was fighting a family court case. They made up neglect petitions against me and my wife, right? Separated me and my family, so I haven't been able to live with my family for going on seven years. So last August, I filed a letter rogatory. Uh, now, I had seven docket numbers. My wife had seven docket numbers because they love to create sub-accounts. Mm-hmm. So it was seven apiece. So I did the private exemption bond on the fictitious name for all 14 docket numbers. So I did one for each number. <clears throat> sent, filed a letter rogatory telling the attorney how to handle things in the private. I sent the GSA bonds privately to the judge. I sent it to the county executor, to risk management, and the lieutenant general at the Army Corps of Engineers. When I did that, they they got they quit coming around for like two months. They started begging my wife, if you'll just file for custody, we'll go away. And <clears throat> they so on the 12th, they did a mock trial, just asked my wife a bunch of mundane questions. The warrant they had against me, they dismissed it. Uh, they dismissed my part of the case, and they said, okay, default judgment. He didn't. I ain't worried about that. What did you say after default on. judgment? They did a default judgment to my wife and said, okay, he didn't show up. You got custody. What, you, did they said no appearance? Yeah, the judge actually surprised All right. After I asked, they said no appearance. Hey, I'm just going to. You're cutting out. So they said no appearance, even though you did appear. Or how did you? How did you? Um, did you visit? What did you do? Uh, I did. I didn't go. Oh, okay. So there was yeah. a no appearance. Yeah. So, but let me tell you, they didn't do it for much. He said, and it surprised me when my wife told me this, he said, yeah, the judge, he didn't say he didn't appear. He just said, I'm going to presume that Mr. Robertson had trouble getting here by because of his job. Okay. Or he would have been here. Their tune changed completely after I did the GSA box. Mm-hmm. Sounds really good. So needless to say, I made New York go away. Sounds really good. I'm glad you're going to share that with us. I need to take the GSA bonds and make a uh, redacted copy of them. Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants to see what I did. Right. And the only copies I've got has all my personal information on it. Yep. <laughs> I, wanna, I want that copy. You know, the, the sanitized. Copy. Yeah. This, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So since you're going to sanitize it, what I want you to do is for uh, I'll replace your name and in, in any other words with if it's supposed to be all caps, put it all caps. If it's supposed to be 
like for right first as a proper noun if it should be or caps. I don't mind. I don't Mi mind leaving my name. It's what like I'm saying the is social, the birth certificate number, stuff like the address. What I'm like saying, that. what I'm saying is, keep. I want you to give us the style that it should be in. All right, make it a no-brainer. Give us it. Give it to us in the right style, Chicago Manual style. Okay. All right. Thank you. Not a problem. Now, I will tell y'all, do I have any 100% proof that it worked? No. You know, y'all should already know they're not going to admit anything. You had private all style we, proof. Yeah, we all we have is their actions. In other words, the yeah. attorney ran for the hills. They changed their tune. They just sound they so good. Know. I know, right? Mm-hmm. Made them go away. That's all I cared about. Mm -hmm. It kind of confirmed what Yusuf said that they're gonna they're gonna use your credit either by your choice or by force. Yeah, that's why we need to um, be have a certain measure of cooperation. We have to think like a, an executor and pay the the employees. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I'm hoping the DA in West Virginia calls me uh, next week because that uh, got a driver want me to settle his case for. Him. Now this one, he was in commerce, so I kind of have to handle it differently than on the private side. But I'm gonna tell the DA, said you're a warrant. It's a warrantless arrest, so that means it's a violation of his Fourth Amendment, Fifth Amendment, Sixth Amendment, and Fourteenth Amendment due process rights because the cop never saw anything. And I said, and if I beat this case, I am going to pursue the violations of the Hobbs Act, Part 6 and Part 7. So can we please settle this matter and not do injury and harm to the driver? I'm trying to look up a case uh, so I can ask you a question. Need a case? Tell me. I'll go get it on Westlaw. Uh, well, I want the. Um, we have some overlapping information. Let's see here. Okay, Briscoe versus uh, Lahue. What's it about? Well, I think maybe this guy. Um, was citing this case by accident and really was should have cited whatever you're talking about. Because uh, when I looked at this on just the uh, U.S. Supreme Court, it's focusing on the police officer or agent um, not being liable. But what I want is uh, the information that you sound like you're talking about where they need to have like two witnesses or like they need to have a witness something about the cop has to have a witness or be a witness or something no so because uh, he can't do a warrantless search he can't do no a warrantless uh, arrest a warrantless arrest yeah uh, uh say like i'll tell you his story he was he's a truck driver it was nighttime and he was following his bus for like eight miles it was one of those football team buses for the local high school, right? And he got on a straight stretch of road and it was a passing zone. So what did he do? He stepped out in the left lane and passed. And he committed to it. He was already halfway up beside the bus when a car started coming at him. So he mashed the gas on the truck, got on around him, and the coach, the driver of the bus, called the sheriff's department. There's a problem to identify who it was. So that's a flaw. All it was is a white truck. Well, that company has 35 up there doing the fracking sand. So which white truck? Alberta. Alberta. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, after you said sheriff department, you cut out. 
okay, so the sheriff's department, they called the sheriff's department and reported this white truck almost caused an accident, okay, which we don't see the evidence of that. And so the cop went and got it, you know, pulled them over and arrested him with a warrantless arrest for careless and reckless driving. Well, a warrantless arrest cannot be done unless the cop actually sees you commit the crime. This is a real stretch. He didn't see anything. He didn't see anything. So he could not have done a warrantless arrest. We can't hear you. I stopped talking. Oh, I thought your mouth was moving. <laughs> no. Now, see all those statutes, codes, rules, regulations, all that stuff. You can beat them over the head with those if you know, know what you're doing. Because that they have to follow those. At least they're supposed to. The problem is a lot of people try to beat them over the head that don't know what they're doing. That reminds me of something that Sean Haggerty said about you got to read the manual for your jury rules locally. Mm -hmm. So what does that bring to mind to you for rules that you could use in your favor? Anything? Uh, it depends. It depends on the situation. I don't know. I've never read the jury rules. All right. A jur the jury rules only apply in my opinion, if you are in a commercial court or an admiralty court, you know what I'm saying? Because those courts, the judge controls the jury and there are rules that the jury have to follow. In a common law proceeding, the jury is the judge. They don't have to do nothing but judge the facts in the case. I mean, the facts in the law. One is called a trial by jury. One is called a jury trial. And I'm thinking, and I always get these two transposed, but I'm thinking a jury trial is the admiralty side and a trial by jury is the common law side because then the, ju the ju judge is the jury. That's why it's a trial by jury. That's what I'm thinking. It, but it, I could be wrong on that one. I always get those two mixed up. Look it up in, like, Grant's um, Admiralty Law. I like his book. I like his writing. Grant Gilmore? Yeah. And I like the um, Statutory Supplement book. That little um, summary. Yep. I like Admiralty Law. Reading about it. I'm going to tell you what. The more I've learned... A use of L said it one time. He said, those that figure out the rules will love the system. Yeah. Those that don't will hate the system. Yeah. I'm going to tell mm -hmm. you what. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. I've learned all this stuff I've learned, and it's like, I look at the system, and I'm like, this is fun. I know. It's a candy store. Yeah, it is, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Plus, you can make pretty things like... <laughs> You can put silk ribbons, you can use grommets and silk ribbons, and even uh, lace, you know, as your goods that are carried hey. by your vessel. <laughs> I love it. And, and you girls love pretty things. That's yes, I love that. And then I can use my pretty uh, fountain pens. Oh, I just love it. And stamps. Oh my gosh. I have boxes <laughs> of stamps and special uh -oh. pens and inks. I've got to find a place to get stamps made with my, because I've got a picture of my family crest. I need to develop that. Well, my grandmother on my dad's side was real big into genealogy. <clears throat> so, they ended up going to Scotland and getting a small replica of our family crest. Did you, um, you know, tweak it? No. 
it's our family crest. Why am I? I don't have to mm -hmm. tweak it. All right. I mean, it's the family of Robertson. Why am I going to tweak it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just need to get it into the proper usages, like uh, being able to print on my envelopes, being able to get stamps made with the crest on it. You know what I'm saying? Um, uh-huh. I like embossers, but I don't have one yet. And I have a question for you. What? Um, when, okay, I haven't re gone to like a, a recorder. I haven't done anything. I haven't like filed something. So if I put grommets on my documents, is that going to be a problem when with filing something? Uh, because no. if they're saying you need to use, you know, the eight, eight and a half by 11 paper, I'm thinking, okay, they want something to be easily handled. Are no, they making copies of everything? What you would do is this right here. If you file a, say you file a claim into the court or a complaint or anything, right? And it's multiple pages. You got to submit multiple copies to the court. Okay. One copy is going to the clerk. Okay. And you can label that one clerk's copy because what they're going to do is they're going to take it apart and put it in, uh, in a digital format. See what okay. I'm saying? Okay. So they'll just take the grommet out. No, I would, that <laughs> one copy, just put a staple in it. Oh. Okay. But the court copy, now you label it clerk's copy, court's copy. Okay. Uh, if, if they need three copies for the court, then you put on three separate ones, court's copy. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you stick a grommet in it if you want to. Okay, Here's, that's what I'll do. You can, it doesn't matter how you attach your papers together. You can take a piece of string and tie them together if you want to. And I'm going to do that too. I just, I don't know why I just love doing all of that stuff. Oh, it's fine. And you want them to be attached. Because and I like that the, way. The, mm -hmm. if, that way, if it's altered after it's in the court's possession, then there, and, and pages are missing, you can prove it. Right. Plus, uh, yeah, I want to use that string. I want with the um, a combination of some wax too to um, sec to show that it's not um, unknotted and you know taken out. Um, Eddie Alexander Banks was showing some documents where he was making, where he was, I'm going to mute you for a minute. Okay, so Eddie Alexander Banks was showing how he made some special document where he took like a, a wooden rod and then I think he um, sawed it in half lengthwise to help uh, create a special um bound, especially bound document that he charged, uh, an especially high fee for having to, um, present that in court. Because, you know, it's, um, it's, it's a person, a legal entity, and when they want to call that person, you know, uh, order that person to come to court, then, well, big fee. Now, here's uh, the thing. You were, you were muted because, uh, we couldn't hear you anyway, so I talked while you were muted. Uh, now here's the thing don't get too caught up on how it's bound right there's different ways well what I mean is he's using a dowel rod or some kind of piece of wood yep to me to me that's just going too far that that the judges well, are gonna look at you and say really well the point was I think uh, he wanted to make you know have kind of a purpose for charging a certain fee, I think it was twenty thousand for a pair an appearance. I'm not sure. Yeah, as um, long as the papers are bound together in mm -hmm. some way, shape, or form. Like I said, it doesn't matter if you punch a hole in the top left corner and tie a ribbon around it. Mm -hmm. That's considered bound together. 
-hmm. as long as everything is attached together. You remember when you got your birth certificate authentication done? Yeah. The state, they stuck their paper on it, and it was attached with glue. Then it goes to the federal. What do the federal do? They put a brass ribbon, a brass drum, right? Mm Mm-hmm. So that's all they did. Did the state use any glue? I don't think mine had any glue on it. Mine did. Oh. I had like a sticky back to the top of their page and it was stuck directly to the document. You know, some people I see they've got this bluebird paper that's um, behind their other papers. Now I'm thinking, oh, okay, that's the flag, that blue paper, what's going on? Now, here's something else. The authentication process yeah. at the state level is going to be done on a lot of things. Oh, I have anytime, a question. Anytime you have a government official sign anything, send it to get it authenticated. Now, when we got our um, birth certificates authenticated, we had to say, okay, well, I want it done in, uh, for Taiwan or Indonesia. Exactly. But how do we get other documents? Yeah, but see, that was for a special country. How do we get other documents that are just, you know, going to be for here, like a court case or whatever for um, affidavits? That for, they, they have the option on the authentication process. They have those for court records. But I can There's say documents. authenticate, but I don't have to say some weird country? No. No, it's for court records, Okay. And you would specify that. They, if you go look at the information on the state website for authentication, they ha- they should have links on there for certain types of documents. Okay. So one of the one of the links is going to be um, for court documents. Okay. Mhm. And then you would send that in for that. I mean, like you got your, you have your certificate of title for your car, right? Uh, I don't know. I think well, I let's s- just, let's say you do, okay? Mm-hmm. You only have legal title. You don't have equitable title. You got to okay. merge the two. So what do you do? You send off the certificate of title to the Secretary of State to have it authenticated. They're going to get authenticated and send it back to you. Once you get it back, then you're going to do an acceptance and acknowledgement letter, and then you're going to take it, and you're going to take it down to the uh, Register of Deeds office, have it recorded with the acceptance letter attached to it, acceptance and acknowledgement, right? And you file it at the Register of Deeds, because that's where an owner files his property, right? Mm -hmm. And then once they do that then you're going to get a certified true copy of that right there and then you're going to send it off to have it authenticated for that step and you have actually merged legal and equitable title and you are the owner of the car And do we do this for our birth certificate too? Uh, yes, you do. Because uh, once you've done your uh, authentication process at the state and federal, mm-hmm. uh, then you're going to do, when it comes back from the federal, you're going to do your acceptance and acknowledgement letter, attach it to it. And um, now the problem's going to lie is how is the um, register of deeds going to be able to scan it in because you can't take it apart, okay? Um, but honestly, I think I agree with Sean. Do the acceptance and acknowledgement letter for it, take it down to the register of deeds, file it, get a certified true copy, and you can get that authenticated, and now you are the rightful owner of it, and then once you reach a certain point, just like Sean did, what did he do? He surrendered it to the United States. But because it's their creation, 
and you're trying to make peace with the United States. Uh -huh. and, he said, and he said, yeah. He said, I am the beneficial interest holder of it, but I surrendered it to them and made them the trustee, basically. Um, would they, so would this go back to the thing I was asking about, about the WIFIT, W-H-F-I-T, um, filings where the U.S. as partial, as trust, co-trustee would get paid 50% on all of our transactions? Um, uh, possibly. Okay, like said, so I've then this puts the me, huh? I've never heard of the WIFIT, so I don't know. It's possible. Well, it's in know. Dropbox. It's in the El Mago file. Yeah. And you got to listen to the Maryville audios that explain it. Yeah. So do that. It's a it's a good priority to help me know because I need to know if this is good stuff that he's sharing. You cut out again. No, I quit talking. Oh. All right. Well. Yep. Always remember, anything you get a government official to sign, you need to get it authenticated. All right. I need to look at that. So authentication could get expensive. Um, hmm. You mean by hey, authenticating everything? Yeah. Say you uh, register something at the Register of Deeds and they they stick the uh, paper that they attach to it from the Register of Deeds, right? Which they want to get that office authenticated by the Secretary of State to prove it is a genuine article. What if, uh, <laughs> do we have to really do each type of document separately? Uh, well, uh, or what, what if we just made like a big fat book and said, okay, authenticate the whole thing? <laughs> no, they won't do it that way. Okay. Uh, because what they're actually authenticating, even on the birth certificate, they're not necessarily authenticating the birth certificate itself. Go back and read what was done. They are authenticating the office that did everything. Okay. Oh yeah. Uh huh. That, that yeah. That no, not the witnesses. In other words, if you did the birth certificate, did the person that authenticated at the have the okay. So you, so it's it's authenticated. Okay that yes, that person was the office holder at the time of the issuance, and yes, they had that delegation of authority, that type of thing. Okay, so what the authentication process actually does is make it absolutely 100% self-authenticating evidence for a court matter. If you ever had to go to court, there is no disputing it's on its uh, on it as evidence. So, like I explained, the certificate of title. If you you send the certificate of title off to the Secretary of State, get it authenticated. They're going to authenticate the state's office that signed it and send it back. Then you do an acceptance, an agent's acceptance and acknowledgement letter of the property. And then you're going to take it to the register of deeds and register it as your property. And then what she, and then when he or she at the register of deeds office is going to sign a piece of paper and that you're going to get that out have legal and equitable title to the vehicle. And if anything ever goes up in the court because you got that double authentication for each office. The court cannot deny it as evidence because the secretary signed off on it. 
Yeah. And that it's just it, it meets all the standards under the rules of evidence that it's it's a fact. There's, there's no disputing it and I don't care what anybody says, it meets all the standards. The DA can bitch and complain all they want. It's it's one hundred percent evidence. It don't even have to be qualified. Because once the Secretary of State signed his or her John Hancock said, Yep, this is all authentic and official, the courts have to accept it. All right, we've got Wesley in here. Wesley, do you feel like giving us a little update on what's going on? Okay. Um, good evening, everyone. Sorry I'm late. I've um, uh, got a big old set of documents that I, I got to go through. And um, just real short uh, back, background on what's going on and what I had to deal with. Um, my ex-wife of three years now um, is trying to take my natural born child away from me. Um, my big ass mistake was allowing this female to adopt him. So I have to now go through court to battle her for um, basically having her to take her hands off of my son. Uh, the reason, or anyone who knows uh, or has been aware uh, over the past three weeks, I was um, arrested uh, on a uh, warrant for contempt of court, I found out. And the contempt of court was because of something that I had already served. So it was actually double jeopardy. Um, they held me for 21 days, starting in Essex County uh, Jail and then moving me to Union County Jail. Um, when I found out what actually was going on, what I was being charged with, of course, I'm already wrapped up into the system, so it's not like I could really fight it too great. Um, but I do intend on at least, and at the very least, recouping the entire effort so that um, number one, it takes all their incentive for all the work that they put in and puts all that back into my pocket. Next thing after that it will, will be a lawsuit, which I'll go through the administrative process in order to get that taken care of. Um, the background on this contempt of court, huh? Did someone say something? Okay. No. Okay. Uh, the back one on the contempt of court. Oh, oh, a question? All right, what do you got? Huh? All right, um, I'll just continue. Uh, the background on the contempt of court, that sounded really choppy. I didn't get it. I'm not able to unmute him. I don't know what's going on. It's like oh, half, um, halfway on, halfway off. Okay. Oh, wow. All right. So the background on the contempt of court was the judge had put an order out where I was supposed to bring my son for an interview. The exact uh, wording of that order was to, the order is to bring my son for an interview. Uh, at that very hearing, uh, I had produced a challenge of jurisdiction, but of course, you know, I'm trying to be respectful, I so I pose it as a question. So me posing the question of jurisdiction the judge decided he wanted to, you know, start flexing some muscle. I don't know and what you know. Wow. Who is that? It looks like everybody else is muted. I don't know what's going on. Um, anyway, uh, the judge had um, 
started to, he wanted to flex his muscles and decided he wanted to threaten me with the contempt of court and the nature of that contempt. And he said it was civil. So I felt, okay, no problem. I can deal with a civil contempt. So, and knowing that a civil contempt is a fine, it's not imprisonment, but unbeknownst to me, and I, I didn't read further into the contempt charges uh, before this point, was that courts give themselves the latitude upon uh, what they call discretion to actually imprison someone for what they consider disobedience to the court's orders. But again, number one, the court's order was bring my son, which I actually did, and told the judge, he's right outside the courtroom. I have no problem with you doing the interview. I have no problem with you asking questions of my son. Just, you know, give me the answer or proof of jurisdiction. Um, and he refused to do so, decided to hold me in contempt. So the second contempt um, was a continuance of the first, which for what anybody else would understand is that you're serving again for something you've already been, you've already either served or dealt with. I didn't show up for that hearing uh, and they decided to hold another hearing by phone. Now, being that I did con uh, participate with that one, that actually satisfied any other contempt charge. It should have. Uh, but this particular judge decided to continue still with the same contempt. So now my situation is that um, my ex-wife has sole legal and physical custody of my son, and they have basically prohibited me from being able to contact my son in any shape or form. Now, when I tried to address this in front of the judge when she decided to release me, which honestly I knew they couldn't hold me any further anyway, uh, I had to put it on the record that um, for what you have stated for this order, my son's birthday, my son's birthday is actually tomorrow. And her order prevents me from speaking to my son on his birth, his 15th birthday. Now he already lost his mother. Now you're going to try and take his father from him. And the judge decided, Oh, well, you know, that'll be between you and the, and the plaintiff, your ex-wife, which is like, but that's not the order. So even if, my ex-wife allows me to talk to my son for his birthday. If she so desires, she could still try and say, oh, he violated the order. So this is where my situation is right now. Oh, uh, one last caveat about this. I had put in, um, uh, or I should, rec I, I recorded uh, a surety bond, a silver surety bond of $25. Uh, in the Essex County uh, uh, Register's office. When I made mention of that to this particular judge that uh, I was arrested by, which is in a different county, she decided to say, oh, that was in a different county. That was recorded in a different county. It doesn't apply here. I protested, trying to say, hey, you know, if it's recorded in one county, it applies to the whole state. You don't have the right to say that. But she clearly ignored what I had to say and decided to continue on. Any questions? It's fairly new to me to learn about how some women are treating the fathers. It's shocking. Oh, it's disgusting.
anyone with any questions of uh, things that I've done or any ideas that they may think would have helped better? Uh, I was interested in that surety bond you were talking about just now. Oh, so sure, sure. Bond? It's a full page document. Um, the one thing is that you actually have to have the silver certificates in hand. Uh, what I did was I did a photocopy of the silver certificates on the front side. It has the, the serial numbers. And I also have a fifth page that describes uh, those silver certificates by serial number. And um, let's see, I had the secretary of the, of the treasury for each bill and all uh, for each certificate, I should say. And also the treasurer, was it secretary to treasury and the secretary of, what was it? Um, oh boy, not secretary of the currency. Um, there's another title on each uh, on each item of currency. You will find two signatures. The first is the secretary of the treasury, and the second one is the what was it? Oh, the Greek. Let me let me find one, uh, and I can tell you better. Where is it? But that is what I had to do in um, setting up that silver surety bond. And with oh, so. uh, it was it's supposed to serve to prevent anyone, if there's a warrant that's issued for you, this is supposed to satisfy that warrant before any law enforcement officers get to you so that you are not arrest proof, but gonna, they're not gonna keep and hold you. That's what the purpose of it is. So I had, I had recorded this with the case number so that um, I would be able to enforce the use of the, the silver surety bond. But sure, I can definitely send you a template um, Right now, my computer is down, but I'm going to be getting it back, uh, I expect, tomorrow, and I'll be able to send that right out to you. Great. Yeah, thank you. Um, I was just kind of interested in that. Uh, uh, I, I was thinking about looking into um, buying silver for that. Is, is that how it's done? Yes. Um, now, some people buy silver dollars. I don't because silver dollars are not serialized. And I would rather have something that I can use that is actually serialized in order to show proof that I actually am the holder in due course of these certificates. I see what you mean. You mean so, like uh, those certificates that you, you said right now? Right. The gold coins, I mean gold coins, silver coins, they don't come with that. Right, the coins don't, but silver certificates do. Because um, the, certificate, the certificate is actually a receipt of silver. So, uh, I sounds like I should instead be looking into uh, the certificates rather than just the silver. Again, I'm not going to say which way to go. I'm just giving okay. reasons why I went. Yeah. Uh, in, yeah in all I, truth I didn't even. Honesty, I'll share with you this. In all truth and honesty, um, it's not a, a, a it's not a far cry of belief to see, for example, someone taking a single silver certificate dollar and just Photoshopping the crap out of it to where they have 21 or more. Huh. Because again, uh, <laughs> they're not realized. Oh, right, right, right. And it's not like, even if you make copies, 
the the resolution of the coins is not so great that you can tell one scuff versus another between two coins. Oh, is that how uh, it can be done by photocopying the actual coin? That's how it is done. That's exactly how it's done. Oh, wow. So, yeah, yeah to this show the, that you have the coins, you have to photocopy them. Yeah, I, I've uh, been looking on this one website online called uh, APMEX. Yep, they sell I'm a member. Silver. Oh, okay. I'm a member. So, yeah, I'm very well aware of that. Um, and the thing that got me thinking about this was I decided before I actually went and invested into this to look at actually gold. And the gold, the ounces of gold that are produced, especially by Atmex, is, they are all serialized on the, uh, the bullion itself. So that got me thinking about serialization and how am I able to show proof that I actually have these coins without having to bring in the case of coins every single time. And the best way to show proof of that is to show something that's actually serialized. What's serialized? The silver certificates, especially those uh, that are free circ or that have been circulated before. The referencing numbers, just like, like everything else that's identified. Exactly. And they sell those certificates on that site? No, not on Atmex. Where I where I was able to get good and 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 uh, condition silver certificates was actually by eBay. There are quite a few people who are offering actually blocks of these silver certificates. One at a time, one in a lot, 10 in a lot, um, 50 in a lot, 100 in a lot. Wow. Uh, thank you for your information. I'm gonna look uh, into that. Uh, the silver coins are starting to sound a little uh, more difficult. Not more difficult. I mean, it is the actual metal, but in order to show proof to some, you know, some third party who's trying to put a demand on you, it's going to be difficult to show that having to actually bring the coins. You know, that did come across my mind at one point that uh, uh, the coins, they're just kind of willy nilly, you know? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But you could have some for your uh, pocket, though. Yeah. <laughs> some, yeah, some old or mo uh, Morgans. Oh, yeah, definitely. Morgans are great. Morgans are fantastic. And matter of fact, if you go into a court case and you need to give valuable consideration for that case, right on the spot if you just simply give uh, a morgan put it on the record i'm giving legal uh, or lawful money for consideration of this case they can't say no it's lawful money So there's definitely a purpose to having, you know, actual silver coins. Uh, I would also encourage, you know, you know, have a have a portfolio of this, not just silver certificates, not just silver coins. There's also gold certificates that are available, and then there's also gold bullion or gold, uh, uh, like ounces of gold, that are available, or even if you want to get sub ounces. All of these are for valuable consideration. Well, one step at a time. <laughs> Just, you know, trying to, trying to broaden the palette here so that, you yeah. know, we're stuck on a single thing. Yeah, you definitely did that for me. Uh, uh, thank you. <laughs> no problem. Hey, Wesley. I'm sorry, I missed where you said we can purchase the silver certificates. 
Could you? Oh, I got mine from eBay. Cool. Okay. Thank you so much. Sure. Any other questions? <clears throat> Have you uh, recorded anything like in the county? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the Silver Surety Bond and also my trust. I am, I think I'm being hesitant with, uh, with, with that step. Um, I'm, I'm, is that like, uh, Yeah, I'm. I'm probably just uh, overthinking it. <laughs> well, uh, you have a valid thought. I'll say that first. Um, the trust is private, right? And you are not to bring private items into the public, right? However, the trust seems to be an intermediary at certain points. In other words the knowledge of the trust, the, cer the certification of the trust, the abstract of the trust, um, excuse me, if you, your security agreement, uh, your indemnity agreement and hold harmless. Um, let's see, what else? Um, of course, your um, your public documents that, that show your proofs of who you are and what capacity you're in, such as your W-A-B-E-N and your Form 56, um, assigning, uh, uh, what's her name? Uh, what's her last name? Meta in Puerto Rico and Mnuchin in Washington, D.C. Uh, I know for, me, for my package, I had Raul Maldonado. But uh, that has since changed in uh, Puerto Rico. Um, oh, you know what? That just reminded that? me. Uh, what happened with Puerto Rico? Oh, what do you mean? The, the change well, in the Treasury? Um, uh, someone on one of these groups posted, yeah, the, don't send uh, any more packets to Puerto Rico. Uh, and I, I'm, that's all I had heard from that so i'm just not sure what exactly happened they said send it to minutian oh well yeah you do send things to minutian but you also send you know certain things to puerto rico now i only heard one person saying anything about that so unless i get more <laughs> sources unless i get more sources saying the same thing i'm going to continue with what i've been doing gotcha Okay. <laughs> that's part of the plan, at least yeah. for me. Exactly. Exactly. All right. I think it was oh. due to the, um, somebody said something about the flooding and that was oh. the purpose to slow things down there. Mm, probably. That, that's probably true, but um let's say it this way if you got a really big piggy bank and the piggy bank is surrounded by a moat the only thing you're going to do is build a bridge to get to the piggy bank hmm. you're not going to shut down the piggy bank because it's surrounded by a moat that's an actual advantage. I mean, the, does anybody see any other way to, to think of that? I like what you're saying. So, yeah, just because one person says a particular thing, oh, you know, be careful, blah, blah, blah. Just like any of these groups, the people who are worth their salt will say, look, you don't have to believe me. Research it for yourself. Read it for yourself.
All right. So you want me to send you um, the surety bond, right, Dan? Oh, um, well, yeah, I'm not ready for it, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind taking a look at, at that, please. Okay. Copy me. <laughs> Copy me on it. All right. But you got uh, everyone who's interested, put their emails in the chat. And um, Marie, make sure that I get to my email so I can send it out, okay? Okay, got it. Any other questions? Well, I don't have so much a question, just about, it's just me overthinking my situation, my, you know, my, uh, where I'm at right now with this, uh, cause I feel that I'm ready to start filing some stuff. Okay. Uh, but, but I don't know. <laughs> I have a, a trust set up, uh, the security agreement, the indemnity agreement, uh, but I just have some questions. Um, Go ahead. so you had like a, a notary I mean did you uh, uh, do you, like did you did you get like a uh, notary that you know I mean did, or did did you just go to like any notary and get this done or does it have to be me personally um, I actually have some friends who work at the city of Newark in City Hall so I was able to, you know, get quite a few favors um, for free. And then oh, okay. I did a, a really, really strong relationship with my bank mm -hmm. that I have my trust accounts set up. And again, able to get notary um, documents or documents notarized, I should say, uh, for again, for free. Uh, well, my thing is that uh, I've, I uh, remember in one of the videos, the webinars that I ha have uh, watched, uh, it talks about how um, it's important to have the notary done, you know, on the same day and of the of the uh, of the meeting, the meet like for the meeting minutes, and uh, it just it just feels like, yeah, you can't just go and and get it done the next week later or something like that. Uh, um, uh, things need to be uh, very, uh, I guess, punctual or, or correct. I think on, on all this, and I'm not, I'm not sure if I did it right. You know. Well. But I got, I got uh, it notarized though. <laughs> yeah. The, I only follow a few guidelining rules when it comes to this. Um, one of them being make sure you use as few different notaries as possible. So if you have one or two that you typically go to, try and keep with the one or two with all of your value. Okay. Um, the next thing, <laughs> the next thing is um, when it comes to notarizing particular documents, like notarizing your minutes, Again, your minutes, that's the private part of your trust. That's well, I mean, I didn't, I didn't mean to notarize the minutes, but because uh, you, you, like, you, you hold a meeting to, you know, for, let, let's say, for the banking resolution. Uh, yes. Oh, well, no, that one, that one isn't notarized either. I mean, well, for, for some instances, you would have uh, a meeting, you would resolve something, and then, you know, you would go out and get it done, maybe get it notarized. Yeah, I, w I was already thinking that you need like a special notary, uh, like, a, like, like you got a guy, you know, I have my notary guy uh, mm -hmm. to go to. I guess that's what you said, though. That's true. Yeah. The, rela the relationships. Um, now, with your meeting, with, with your uh, meeting minutes, you really don't need to notarize that so much. You can right. actually yeah, no. notarize the total book of it and just that's the only notary uh uh, on that set of documents, your actual pages, you can add or subtract as necessary. Oh, okay. Because again, this is, this is your private documents. You don't show this to anybody. Right. So it, 
it's not even necessary to notarize because you and your trustees are the only one eyeballs on this. Yeah, that was a bad example. I didn't I didn't mean that in particular, but uh, 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 yeah, I mean, I just I just feel kind of iffy about you know how I how I went about getting my things done. Um, like for example, uh, um, let's say the security agreement. I. I yeah. Uh, or no, which one was it? I just, I remember, uh, uh, I notarized it like the next, next day after. Okay. That's fine. You know what I mean? That, that, that sort of thing. That doesn't change the effect of the, the instrument by itself. See, I'm just overthinking these things. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You're sweating details that, that really don't need to have that kind of attention. You're fine. Okay. Don't feel um, bad. A lot of us overthink it. Hey, uh, Neil, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? Been a long time. I had to take a break. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, but uh, but I'm I'm glad I'm, I'm glad to be back. I'm I'm glad everybody's still still doing it. So. <clears throat> hey, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah, for sure. When we first spoke, you already know. I told you then. This is a lifestyle. Absolutely. I had to take a break because I had a bunch of family stuff. I had, a, my, you know, my mother had passed, and I just had to take yeah, a big, long spiritual break, you know. Yeah, yeah, really sorry to hear that. Yeah, I, uh, thank you, man. But yeah, I stayed in the books. I just stayed off of, uh, I just stayed off of the groups for a while because it was just getting really crazy. So I had to just read and study and do some traveling. So, uh, gotcha. but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm back. I'm back to to being online and working with the groups, and I've connected with a lot of other people on the other groups and. Um, it just feels good to reconnect with everybody, you know. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. So I'm so I'm ready to keep learning. <laughs> yeah, man. Let's do it. Let's do yeah, it. Yeah, for sure. So let's catch up soon, brother. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just sharing with everyone uh, what had happened to me over the past three uh, three weeks, um, and I, I gave you the, the the broad base of what happened, but. Um, the reason why I was arrested, as I found out, was a contempt of court. But of course, you know, the court decided to break some of its own rules uh, in keeping me in there. And the reason why they wanted to charge me in the first place, they just wanted to really flex muscle. That was really it. Yeah, we just uh, we got to have we have to be better at holding them accountable for sure. We're seeing that all over the board. Oh yeah. Sorry to hear that though, man. That sucks, man. I, I I went through a very similar process. I think I was talking to you about that when I when I had gotten arrested and they had basically been breaking their own rules and and flexing that muscle and you know I ended up beating both of them. But now I I'm learning and reading on uh, how to recoup it. Oh yeah, recoupment is like yeah. it's gravy. Well, once we look. Oh well, then we'll have to talk about that. <laughs> once we learn how to recoup, you know, once we learn how to recoup, then we can laugh our way to the bank when they're doing this. Like, you know what? All right, do what you got to do. I, I've noticed you. I've already given you the paperwork. I'm already on. You know, you're on record. So let's. Yep. You want to play this game? We can play this game. Whatever. I'm just going to get paid. It's all good. Then, it. then it's then it's left, then then that's when the lifestyle becomes more playful because oh yeah, we can turn these things around into our favor. And, exactly. and we're non belligerent about it. You know, we're very kind, especially when we know that we've got our protections in place. Then we can oh. be playful and, and, and non belligerent and, you know, and, and have kind of a good time through it, you know, learn some lessons through it, strengthen yep. our character and how we, how we operate. Yep. So <clears throat> I've got three cases I've got to turn around like that. So um, <laughs> I'd be willing to compensate if you can, got, you know, help me out. Uh, and learning the right processes and give me some things I can study. I'm pulling it together. Sure, 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 no problem. Um, but uh, yeah, so it's it's good to be back, um, seeing everything working out. So did you end up working that case out in your favor? Everything work out all right? Not yet, not yet. So what's going on at this? Um, right now, my son is with my ex-wife. Uh, she has been given sole legal and physical custody against um, against court rule. Well, not against court rules. It's, it's against the law, honestly. Because as the birth parent, 
I did not give consent to giving up my parental rights. And there is nothing that, that was done lawfully to take my parental rights. So right. this has been just a strong arm effort from the very beginning. Did you, have you put your kids in trust yet? Yeah. And I showed them proof, which is wow. even worse. So the, as far as notice, they got noticed twice already on this. Right. So Ooh. I'm about that's a, that's a heavy hand you can lay on them for that. Oh, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have them pay for every single day. Right, right. So you're in the process of doing the same thing, but with a different case. Yeah, exactly. Okay, okay. Well, let's team up on that. I've got a lot of information that um, I can share as well because I've been looking into it on what to do with that. So, uh, And I'd like to learn on how you handle that <clears throat> because I've got a friend of mine that well, she's not in the situation yet, but it, it's looking like I don't it. put it past it, it, it's something that could happen I mean you know what I mean no matter how yeah. much we try to make these things you know s solidify in our favor right right, right. Across these guys that push it and uh, to me on a divine level it really is an opportunity to strengthen how we handle these situations exactly and they, they always happen for a reason so um, right it's kind of a blessing and a curse at the same time <laughs> it is it is but it's only a moment that's true that's true. And we are blessed to actually have the people in our groups that we do because yes. that, we have we have a lot of power in combination with who we work with. Exactly. And, truly, and I and that is part of my my gratitude on a daily basis is Absolutely. the people that we have right here. And a lot of us have been together in this for years. Um, yes. And it's the same people. So that's why you know, after my little hiatus, coming back and seeing the same the same people and being able to connect, it was it truly was a blessing. It's it really is an extended family. So that it is, and and we're forming as a family, which Absolutely. is even. So I appreciate you reaching out and putting this together. I, it just came through my feed, so I didn't even see it until until just a minute ago. So, but I clicked, but I I came in immediately. So. <clears throat> cool, cool. Yeah, so it's good seeing you in the group. Definite, man. Definite. And, and listen, I appreciate everybody who, you know, gave any kind of consideration or uh, shared that they were concerned about the situation with me. I, I appreciate all of you. Love all of you. Yeah. Well, we feel that. We feel that. You know, and then when, when each of us are going through this, I mean, I, I feel it with others as well. So. Great, great, great. So let's make let's make it work. Oh, we're going to make it work. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> right on right on perfect perfect <clears throat> so let's see who do we have anyone who's new here <laughs> i'm fairly new okay so anyone? am i okay okay all right um this is actually kind of necessary for me to say, and it's, it's really more, it seems to lean more towards the men than women, but courts and court officers seem to be itching to flex their muscles these days, to operate in a police state as which it seems we're growing more and more into. And trust me, I'm not a person who thrives on conspiracy theory at all, but the evidence is showing right in front of us, day in and day out, that law enforcement and the courts are not interested in justice the way that we've been taught or the way that they try and describe things to us. That being said, um, it seems that it's going to be just a matter of due course that, that at some point along this journey, someone is going to be either very close to success or they will be successful in arresting and imprisoning as many people as they possibly can. Yeah, it's not theory anymore. <clears throat> we, we've already seen that. So yeah, this is this is you know this this is the ugliest face of 
uh, any kind of expression of law, or I should say lawless, that I could ever imagine. But you know the blessing behind that, the silver lining, is if we didn't see what's going on with the corruption and government law enforcement, we wouldn't be as eager to get things corrected. This is true. I mean, I am so eager now more than ever to really get myself in a place of being protected. And like you said, you did all, you did a lot of the work and got yourself where you're supposed to be. But now, now you can actually go back and recoup. Now you can hold people accountable. Now you actually have a status and a power and ability to, inf to, to have enforcement. Exactly. And that right there makes me laugh every day when I think about we have shifted over to the 0. 0.00001% of people yeah. that have the, that, that have access, that either have the knowledge or the access to the knowledge and power to apply what we know to put ourselves in a position that most people on this planet only dream about. Oh my goodness. And even oh. though we're not there completely, we have the pathway to success to be where a lot of these people in, in, in politics and private commerce operate. We found it. Yes. We found the pathway. Yeah. So it is a Absolutely. blessing. I mean, so it is kind of like one of those things okay. where shit happens and it's really bad and we're like, God, I can't believe this is actually happening in this lifetime. But at the same right. time, it's like, but you know what? Yeah, I, I can actually benefit from this. I can benefit. We can benefit <laughs> from this. So, and, and when we have Absolutely. a whole community of people working together to help educate people and pull them up, you know, yep. and like one of my favorite people, Candace, says, it's better to give a hand up than a hand out. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I love it. I love it. Oh, oh, we are blessed. We are blessed, and in, in, in trying times, we are in a very blessed place. Yes, we are. Yes, and we it's are. And, and it's biblical. Whether you're religious or not, it's it's biblical. So It is. <laughs> it really is. So it, 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 it actually adds to, you know, that, that feeling of security, knowing that being that is biblical, that it, there's a, the feeling that – God is on our side, regardless of all. And that, I mean, anyone who has ever gone to church has probably heard one plus God is the majority. So we're already winners. We're already victorious. Doesn't show up, you know, immediately or when we think it should, but in the end, and when all is said and done, no one can deny the victory that we will achieve. Totally agree. So, yeah. But, and, and the funniest thing about the, uh, well, my situation, what I just dealt with, um, being incarcerated for 21 days at the rate of Trezevent versus the 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 Trezevant versus City of Tampa standard, one point eight million times twenty one. Yeah, it was per day, right? Yeah, because he got him. He got him from the time that he actually pulled him. Uh, what was it from the time he <clears throat> from the time he actually asked yeah. for his identification is when he started calculating the time. Exactly. Yeah. And I and I'm, I'm I'm actually visiting family right now in Florida. I'm twenty minutes from Tampa. <laughs> so it's, yeah. it's cool that you bring that up, but yeah, that's a that's a great case. That's a great case. It's a precedent. You know, there's a lot of precedent in cases that are coming up right now. Finally, yeah, that are in our favor, and that's the one thing. As I see, is as as this this as the dark side continues to crumble, and we mm -hmm. see it all around us, and the light shines, we are getting yep. more and more precedenting cases and referencing situations that are actually giving us the guidance and the ability to have even more and more backing us up for what oh, we're yeah. doing. Absolutely. <laughs> and, and when you learn how to fight the way they fight, they don't like it at all, but they can't stop what we're doing. You cannot stop knowledge once it's been expressed. 
No, and, not only that, they can't change the system that they have been operating in for so long. You. They just have to. And another thing I've actually come to realize too, and I've experienced this myself, and and PJ has too, is once we get to a certain place, they almost welcome us as exactly. kind of a nod, nod, wink, wink, welcome to the family, mm -hmm. you made it type of thing. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because they realize what it takes to get to a place where we understand what they're doing, but how to navigate. Right. And at that point, we're more of an asset than we are an enemy. Exactly. Exactly. So when, that's why I tell people, look, don't be scared about going to jail or anything like that. Because okay. what we're doing, when we actually follow law yes. and we reference law and we notice agencies on what we're doing and how we're doing it and what we're referencing exactly. to do it, there's nothing they can do about that. Nothing. Not a single thing. They can do. But we're doing exactly what they want us to do. This is the reason why they tell us in movies, they tell us in books. If you want to find the truth, read. Because yeah. they tell us what to do hidden in words. Yep. And because most people are distracted by the digital realm and they don't read anymore, they already know that yeah. if they can, as long as they can get that 95% of humanity under their control, they don't care about the 5% that figured this out. They really don't care. They don't have time for that. Right. They don't have time for that. They really, because as more people come in, more people get out. And they just yeah. don't care. It's just, it's the cost of doing business. It's something that they've already accepted. And on a deeper level, they want us to figure this stuff out. That's the reason why they keep telling us. Because not only does it justify their actions, but it gives us a way out. And if we oh, can yeah. follow that lead, we have, we have operated on a level of intellectual operations that they welcome. And then it's yeah. like, okay, yeah, you made it. You know what? Okay, you're, you're out of our view. We don't care anymore. M move on. Good luck. That's have fun. It. That's it. So That's it. I've stopped having fear around this once I realized oh, that this, this is where they want us to be. And they have to operate under a universal law. There's no way around it. Uh-huh. That's right. One of the funny things that I had learned about somebody else, I forgot who it was that told me, was when you – Put your assessment together as far as what you are due. Don't think that forgiveness means you're not going to get what you want or need because forgiveness actually shows up tax wise as income to the opposite side. And in this status, we are truthfully agents of the IRS. And what is one of the duties of the agents of the IRS is to report when there's someone who has an income that doesn't want to report that income. So let's go with, you know, the, the knucklehead court of New Hampshire. Yeah, and you picked the right state there, or Minnesota. <laughs> oh, Minnesota. <laughs> <laughs> so they, you you go through a pro, the administrative process. You you know you lodge your complaint. You uh, assess your damages, and you it's so many you know like eight nine digits. Then, surprisingly or unexpectedly, you forgive half of it. And they pay, you know, whatever it is, whatever they want to negotiate you down to, you forgive it. The balance of what's been forgiven is now taxable income to them because it's no longer due by you. So it's pretty much that you have gifted them what they were not going to pay you in the first place. And you have every right and ability to file a 3949A to the IRS to say, hey, these guys had taxable income they didn't report. That's what I did to the judge on my case. <laughs> and, 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 and the prosecuting attorney. Man, they did not like that. I said, oh, look. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I said, I, I, already, I know what you guys are doing. <laughs> yeah, and I, and I said, you know, I, I, you know, I, and I turned in the the fifty six on the uh, to the IRS, and then I filed that on my case, and <clears throat> they didn't like that. And I said, look, hey, I, I, I'm just operating in the same, uh, I'm just not playing the same game you are. And he kind of gave me that look. And I said, look, I, I'm just trying to operate in the same game that you are, the same way that you are, and 
I mean, if you want to be fair about it, take whatever you need. I just think that it's fair that you pay taxes on it. And exactly. He immediately postponed or, or just, uh, he immediately continued the case. Of course. <laughs> and then after that, uh, and then after that, I never showed up for the last, for the last court date. And I called a week later and they said, what case? Exactly. Yeah. yeah exactly. That was thrown out. That was thrown out. And that was a felony case. <laughs> they got dismissed. I mean, there were other things that I did on it, but it was, it was, it was one of those things where it was, it was my second real case that I had to go in there, balls to the wall, and say, you know what, screw it. I'm going to just throw everything at this. I'm going to, I'm, I'm not going into court. I'm going to operate in private through registered mail. I'm only going to do it this way and this way and this way. Yep. I'm going to notice all these people. And th you know what? When I started talking to, when I would call the courthouse and talk to the clerk, she had a completely different attitude with me. She was the nicest, like they were the nicest people. Oh, it, it's so cool. The thing is, is once you get to a certain level with it, and I still have a way to go, but once you mm -hmm. get to a certain level with it, everybody just acts like they're your best friend. It is oh, such, man. It, it is true that once you, once you get your status corrected, the IRS is your employee. Exactly. It's the truth. They work it's for us. Absolute truth. Yes. Absolutely. And they will bend over backwards to do whatever it is that's necessary for you. I just got finished uh, sending off, uh, let's see, my last 1040. And they had a great attitude at the, at the local office. Oh, what, what is it that you needed? Oh, you just needed the sun to have this endorsed and you needed to change. Oh, what you do? Uh, just hand it over to this guy. Okay, he's going to stamp it now. Okay, what, what, so when I asked... All right, well, what kind of, uh, process, excuse me, processing time are, am I looking at? Am I still looking at four to six weeks? He's like, yeah, probably closer to four. So, so like, oh, <laughs> all right now. This is fantastic. Now, was that what you had to have done before the 15th? Oh, I did it on the 16th. Now, you can do it once a year or every quarter, right? Yeah, Absolutely. Okay. Okay. Absolutely. I didn't do I didn't do it for the year, um, but I, I want to make sure that I'm able to do my 1099s on the on the next quarter. Yeah, you can do it on the quarter. There's nothing preventing it. Okay. Nothing at all, and you don't need to specifically have an appointment to do it, because all you're really doing is you're giving them the report. You're just submitting it. Right. Well, I haven't filed in ten years, so that's why I've been very hesitant because. Once you're out of the system for three years, or once you've once you haven't played or signed or agreed in contract with them for three years, you drop out. Yeah, that's the truth. That's and the so truth. I will have been very hesitant to 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 do anything that will somehow recontract me with with them until I get the rest of this stuff figured out. Because right now I'm doing, you know, I'm still working some side jobs on 1099s, and I want to yeah. make sure that if I have to fill out a 1099 that I'm not putting my social but maybe i mean would i use my 82 for that instead as an EIN or oh, no no don't do a w2 no 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 uh you do a w8 or a w8 ben right but they want a 1099 from me and i told them i i would have to look into whether or not i can give them a 1099 don't do a 1099 miscellaneous that's the thing okay don't forget 1099 you got like a through uh, what is it? A through yeah, K. It's A, B, C, E, K. Oh, um, it's a whole alphabet. And you no, know, they, they, they even had, no. Yeah, I think it stops at the K. I think. But um, yeah, it's a bunch of them. And you have to know what each one is. Well, not that you need to memorize it, but it's helpful to know what each uh, 1099 well, for an independent contractor there's a certain set of documents that we should, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming it's the 1099 and W8 and probably something else, but I want to make sure that before tax time of next year, I get that corrected. Yeah. It gives me some time. You will be. You will be. Um, let's see. So the WABN is showing your indemnity against taxes that you're tax exempt. Uh, the W8 is also supportive of that effort. Um, let's see, uh, W. Doesn't, doesn't that just make me as a beneficiary if I'm going to be on, um, 
tax exemption. The yeah. W A B E N. Yes. Yes. Well, not not as a beneficiary. It just says that you are tax exempt because of your entity. Okay. That's what that is. Um, let's see. Uh, w nine W nine is probably going to still be used. Um, and that's for whoever is paying you that is basically to show that they're giving you an invoice or they're honoring an invoice that you have issued to them. Okay. So those forms, that's fine because honestly, those, in, those uh, forms are for businesses and corporations anyway. And uh, using your trust as you go forward, uh, that's where you want it to be. That's where you want it to stay with your trust. So it's not you filing uh, the, the W-9 or W-8-B-E-N. It's actually, well, actually, the W-8-B-E-N is actually for you. The W-9 is for the trust. And okay. let's say if you already have a job, you know, and I know they, they want to file a W-4, right? you would be able to file a W-4-T instead so that you're still showing that tax exempt status. Okay, cool. I didn't know about that one. <clears throat> Thank you Very for that. Very helpful. So W-2s, I don't look forward to W-2s. Look forward to, uh, what is it? There's There was something in in replacement of that and I can't think of it right now. Ugh, I wish my computer was up and running. That's um, right. We're gonna we're gonna catch up soon and uh, I'll write that down. Um, I don't wanna I don't wanna try to take over the call with a bunch of my questions. I know that you guys had already started something and I just wanted to listen in. That's cool. Whatever you want to talk about. Well, didn't you say that you guys were relatively new to this, uh, uh, all of this, and had questions on, you know, where you're at or what to do, or is it legit? We talked about our stuff earlier, so okay. this, the rest is just for Wesley. Okay. Uh, and you. Awesome. <laughs> well, I, we we yeah. we go back a little ways, and we have we've had a lot of these conversations, and um, it's just been nice catching up with with Wesley and jumping back in on the group and I you know honestly I, I really did miss having having regular sessions with with people in these groups it's it's been it's been great it's been great so you guys definitely got in got in on the right groups you know if you're you know for being relatively new yep. <laughs> it's my group <laughs> oh okay that's right I didn't know it was me I was talking to yeah, you're, well, you're not really new. You've been around for a while. A year and a half. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, I jumped in on this whole thing about seven years ago, and it's well, actually started with Patrick Devine and all those guys, but <clears throat> but it's great. It's great. I'm glad to see a lot of the same people. And oh, thank yeah. you for and thank you for pulling this group together, Marie. Yeah. You're welcome. Fantastic. Thank you. This is really fantastic. So, okay. are there any uh, are there any other questions that anyone has, or uh, thoughts, or ideas, or anything to that effect? Uh, what time will be best for me to give you a call? Um, let's see. Tomorrow. Hmm. You know what? Better than that. Sunday afternoon after two p.m. Um, I'm in the West Coast, so is that like five o'clock or one or five o'clock is good. I'm, I mean, it's because I'm not sure what you mean by two p.m. Because two p.m. for me could be five for you, or I don't know. What time zone are you in, Wesley? Eastern. Okay, yeah, I'm. So you and I are in the, big time, the, the same time zone, so. What what is the if you if you don't mind me asking what's the topic you guys are going to connect on? 
Well, I don't know. I, I came just wanted in. to get to know me. I thought I'd just, you know, share. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I'll give you a call tomorrow, Wesley. I mean, uh, Sunday. Yep. Uh, what I'll do is, let me see. Let me get you here. I'm going to text you my number. All right. There you go. Hey. All right. Hey, do you still have mine? Yeah, well, I got, I hope it's the same number. It hasn't changed. I'm going to, I'm going to text you mine anyway. All right. Perfect. Since, we're in the time, since we're in the same, oh wait, okay, so you're on the East Coast. Where, where are you? What state are you in? New Jersey. Jersey? You know, I'm driving up to uh, Pennsylvania in about a week to go uh, rebuild a roof. Are you anywhere right. near there? It, around Pennsylvania? Yeah, I mean, how many hours are you away from, from Pennsylvania? Uh, let's see. Uh, two hours from Stroudsburg, uh, close to two hours from, from, um, uh, oh, Philly. Dude, I'm coming, I'm coming to see you. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm going to come see you, man. I, I've been driving all over the country, Montana, Arizona, New Mexico, <clears throat> um, came down from Washington, was in Idaho for a while, um, Texas for a little while, Florida, North Carolina, South Carolina. I've just been driving all over the country, so um, and meeting up with people from the groups that I've talked to for years, but never actually met. So that I wouldn't met people. Okay, cool. So when I come up, there, I'd love to be able to sit down with you and let's go grab some lunch or, or and hang out for a little bit and catch up. I'd like to show you some of the documents and stuff that I've I've pulled together and some of the bond stuff and and share that with you and kind of get your feedback on some things. And I got some ideas I want to talk to you about. But, perfect, perfect. That but sounds these good. Are, these, these are awesome things to actually talk about in in private, you know, because once we oh, yeah. once we start getting into that stuff, then right, I don't, I don't trust anything digital. <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so I'll be keeping in touch with you until I head up there. All right, perfect. That's what we'll do. All right. Okay. I just sent my number. Text me yours. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to run. I got, I got to get some rest. I got to get up pretty early. But um, I want to thank Marie again for putting on this. And uh, yeah. I'll be connecting with everybody in the groups. And I just personally thank everybody for the hard work and the persistence to get it done and the curiosity to ask the right questions. And, um, you know, I look forward to seeing everybody in the groups again. Perfect. So thank you, Neil. Thank you. You guys all have a good night. I'll talk to you soon. Good night. All right. Got it. Good night. Yeah. Wesley, uh, yeah. was that was was I asking? Was I talking to you earlier? I'm not sure about the trust and the notary and. Yes. I, I think. Okay. I I got confused with uh, who was on the screen when I I guess I have my phone in my pocket uh, right now. Um, oh, that's good. Oh, that's okay. That's okay. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, so you were eating the ice earlier. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> <I'm thirsty. laughs> it's cool, it's cool. I'm still uh, doing my nine to five. Uh, people on here say that they don't, they don't do that anymore. Um, I'm aspiring for that. <laughs> Oh, man, it is a completely different lifestyle to be a private banker and to operate in that capacity is just amazing. And I hadn't even experienced the entire experience of it yet. But so far, everyone, when I when I let them know what it is that I'm doing and, you know, yes, I'm operating this trust and yes, we're operating the estate as well and yes these are the things that we're getting into it's a completely different attitude man uh that's what i want to get you know into uh, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm 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 trying to read uh i'm, I'm making a lot of mp3s of like audiobooks mm -hmm. 
I, I just have more time like that. I'm always like in the car or just with my headphones. Um, I really should be reading though. I'm a procrastinator. But, uh, no, no, no. Get, get the information the way you can get the information. As simple as that. When you get the opportunity to get further into the study and you really need to see the words, it'll make that much more sense. But right uh, now, you're, you're doing a cram. You're trying to cram a lot of information that was missed over decades, and you're trying to get that in here. You don't have to worry about yeah. stressing about it. You'll get it. It'll take you time. Trust me, my brains were leaking out of my ears for the first two weeks when I even found out about this. Like, what? Are you telling me that even money means nothing? Even, you know, there's no court on this planet that really operates where justice prevails. Everything is currency. Everything is coinage. Everything is, has a dollar value. Everything? I mean, I was really upset, seriously upset. So I understand that it's going to take you some time to really be able to get this into yourself to a point where you start speaking different. Right. And when you start speaking different, people are, the ones who know, they're going to know. Oh, 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 okay. Uh, just to give you a quick example. Um, this last time they dragged me up into jail and kidnapped me, the sergeant of the guard had come up and he's like, oh, it's you again. Ah, are we going to have to go through what we went through last time? And what I had to do at that point was I had to refuse take, allowing them to take a picture of me and allowing them to take my fingerprints on purpose. I'd refuse everything. I didn't even sign for my property. And it's not that I gave them hell. It's just, mm, I'm not going to be able to do that with you because I don't want to contract with this jail. I don't want this jail to be liable for what's about to happen. So when I showed up this time, he's like, oh my God. Ugh. And he's like almost cringing. And so when I said, no, I made my statement last time. I've given my proof last time. I don't need to do that this time. So he was like, oh, you know, like a, a sighing a breath of fresh air uh, of relief that, okay, he's not going to do things this other way, but he, I know where he stands. And no, he's not belligerent. No, he's not being difficult. This is just how he operates. So it's a completely different thing. I had another situation. Um, let's see. I had a, a, a trust account set up from PNC, and I wrote, an uh, I wrote a financial instrument. It was an EFT instrument. And they contacted me, you know, at the, at the corporate office to ask, hey, you know, uh, well, what is it that you wanted to do with this? And... Huh? Not right now. This is me. Yeah, I think it's you. Well, that's what happens when you work. <laughs> um, w when they contacted me, they, they were saying, "Oh, well, uh, what do you want to do with these with this thing here? You know, you you wrote these instruments. What do you expect us to do about it?" And I said, "I expect it to be discharged. I expect these things to be discharged and the the bills to be honored." And they decided. Okay, and they close the account. Now, anybody else is going to look at that like, oh, man, they just shut down the account and so on and so forth. Bank accounts don't close. Bank accounts never go away. It's what, what they actually do when they close the account is that they close the public side of the account. The private side of the account still exists. So... They just changed the relationship they had with me. Instead of being a public relationship, now it's a private relationship. And I can with still go that account. The PNC Trust? Yes. So what was up with that? You said uh, they were hassling you? <clears throat> Not hassling. They had asked me 
uh, they wanted to question me about some of the financial instruments that I had sent them that for them to honor, to pay off a couple of bills. So their question to me was, what did you expect us to do with this? You know, that it couldn't be tr uh, dealt with or transacted the normal way. It's not anything that they were used to. Well, what do you want us to do with this? Well, I expected it to be discharged. I expected these uh, charges to be honored and brought so that those creditors, their accounts will be brought to zero. Basically giving my author uh, authorization to use my exemption to pay out the bill. So when they did that and they closed the account, I said, oh, okay, that's what happened. I didn't get upset about it. It's that, okay, now you changed the relationship to where I'm operating with you just on the private side. So it still works. All right. I have that account. I think I have a closed account. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I I went to Link one a couple of years ago. You know, but I was just thinking more about how you said you were how they kidnapped you. I've been kidnapped uh, by the by the police once, and I hated that. That that was not cool. I um yeah. I I made I I upset them. And and that was enough. And I didn't know anything at all at that time. I was just signing, and they took my picture, and and then they had me for three days, and then kicked me out. Uh, mm. Yeah, that sucked. Yeah, yeah, it uh, does. Well, let's say it this way: um, if you are able to keep your resolve about who you are, who you really are, as a man not as a dead thing, and you are able to not be distracted by things they try and shove in front of your face. Oh, you could be charged with this and we can imprison you for this amount of time. And you stay, you know, and, and operate in your capacity they're going to have to realize sooner or later uh hmm that we he's he's coming back for us he's going to come back for us and we have to kind of deal with that i had a situation where i had an entire uh <laughs> i had an entire uh, 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 office. This was a dealing with a child support matter. There was an office that actually shut down for like two months. Uh, for what though? Yeah. Shut down for two months. When you would call to reach the clerk, it would go right to voicemail. Matter of fact, I even called the county say, hey, I can't reach this particular office. Um, can you help me out? Uh, I know there's, there, that this is going on and so on and so forth. They couldn't reach the, <laughs> that office. They couldn't reach their own court. So I was like, oh, there is some power here. Look at this. Do mm. you made that happen or what do you mean? I have no other way to think of it. The office does not close. I know that for a fact. And I had been dealing with this particular child support office for five years already. No, five years. And I know they don't close. So when I went through this process and I had filed these papers, suddenly, for some reason, can't reach that court. You can't discuss anything about that court with any of its superior offices. Well, I was just down the court, you know, just a couple of months ago and people were there and it was open and running. I can't reach them now. Why can't I reach them? Oh, well, we'll try and call for you. 
Okay, what's the status? It's going to voicemail. They're telling me this to my face. It's going to voicemail. So what other mm. explanation could there be? Uh, yeah, because that doesn't normally happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. So even Ooh. if they temporarily shut it down, it, it shows that there's power in this. Yeah, I, I, I'm studying as much as I can. Oh, yeah. I, I got to get out of this uh, hole that I'm in. I'm get, help out my family and whoever I can, you know? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is, this is a struggle here. It <laughs> is. Sucks. It really is. And it's a, it's, a, it's a sinking vortex. And more and more people really should know about these things so that they can take control of their lives again and be able to live freely. That's really what this is about to me. This is about freedom. And not just financial freedom. This is, this is freedom to live. And exactly. To so, I mean, I can't imagine a better type of lifestyle. And if the only contingency about this is, oh, you, you'll be in jail for a couple of days. Oh, okay, I could deal with a couple of days. But it's not going to be often. I know it's well, not going to be. And, once, and you, once you know, they, I mean, once you are able to handle that, that doesn't happen too yeah. often, does it? No, it doesn't. You know? It really doesn't. And what I'm getting ready to do now, I'm about to actually step this up to where I am being, I'm appoint, self-appointing myself as executor of my estate and i'm going to be filing this in probate and the the same accepted for value methods that we've been learning about i'm going to be able to send all of that stuff directly to the probate to get everything discharged on site and there's nothing anybody can do about it court cases Oh, you, you're driving without a license. Here's a, here's a ticket. Matter of fact, we, we're about to put you in jail. All right, well, here's the whole case. Probate, there you go. Take care of it. Damn. Disappears into the abyss and never comes back. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to give you a call so we could uh, talk more on Sunday. Uh, I, I actually have to go right now. Uh, nope. Uh, but yeah, you've been you've been really helpful. I uh, uh, would like to talk to you again if you have a chance. You know, uh, on Sunday. <laughs> Absolutely, I look forward to it, Dan. Cool. I'll 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 get all my paperwork in front of me and see what I can, you know, be more aware of because I I I think uh, uh, I'm like self intimidating myself. Like it's just it's a lot. But it probably isn't even. <laughs> You'll be okay. I promise you. You will be cool. okay. All right. All right, then. All right. Thanks a lot. You have a good one. Bye, Marie. Have a great night, Dan. Take care. Bye. <laughs> All right. L let's see. Who who's still here? Okay. We still got a few. Uh, anyone else have uh, questions or comments? Annette, Marvin. Yeah, Annette and Sandy are both interested in your interested in your silver bond information, as well sure, as Daniel. Sure. Not a problem. I'll be able to send that over. If I, if I can't get to it tonight, I'll have my. I, I expect to have my computer back tomorrow, and I'll be able to send it at that point. I'll send you a little email with this info. Perfect. I think we're done. I'm so glad that you are home. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'll be happier when I destroy this piece over here. <laughs> We've got to take away their incentive for this uh, yes. behavior. Absolutely. And once that first recruitment goes through, it's like the grapevine. They, they now all of a sudden want to leave you alone and Oh, well, let's, let's just minimize our, you know, input in this. It's an amazing turnaround. 
Well, I want to have more meetings with you and uh, make some progress with various things. Not a problem. Not a problem. Like That's I said, good. this being a lifestyle, it covers quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was actually impressed when I did my first filing. I thought, okay, I've arrived. Then I realized, oh, I'm actually at the starting the starting gate now. <laughs> There's so much more to do. I think we'll go through that repeatedly. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's a good way to keep yourself humble about whatever it is that you're doing that you don't become heady in you know, having the expectation that, oh, well, I've already arrived. I've already done this and I've already done that. No, you got to kind of understand that there's so much to do that you can't accomplish everything. Yeah. Well, why don't you go uh, get some rest? <laughs> no problem. I'm about to get uh, something to eat myself. And uh, I got to get on this case over here. So I got some notes I need to write and some briefs I need to type up. Very good. All right. Thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Have a great night. Take care.